this part is over. Welcome back to the Cave of Wonders Dreamwalkers, I am your Sith Lord Callus, and this is another Rancorous Review, the Resistance Edition. If you're new here to the channel, please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications as I will be reviewing each episode on Monday, after the original air date. The Platform Classic is a doozy, one of those episodes meant to get you right in the feels. The entire station is on edge with excitement as they anticipate the big race. Kaz gushes with jubilation as Team Fireball accompanies Yeager to Captain Doza's office in Hightower. There, Doza petitions Yeager to take part in the big race, the Platform Classic, to draw bigger crowds from across the galaxy. The prize? 100,000 credits that Doza wants to reinvest into Colossus Station. Of course, the Aces will participate, but the main attraction? Marcus Speedster a legendary racer and three-time winner of the Five Sabres, and Yeager's estranged younger brother. Team Fireball is starstruck, but after 10 years of avoiding his baby brother, Yeager is less than impressed with his presence on Colossus Station. Yeager rejects Doza's proposal, leaving the group with mouths gaping in the middle of the office as he makes his way back to his garage. Speedster eventually finds Yeager in his hangar, accompanied by his right-hand man, Oplock, in his astromech droid R4-D12. Oplock is his Rausa Niktos, a Nikto subspecies more commonly referred to as the Mountain Nikto. The odd language they speak is known as Krasik, and if not for the smile on his face, I would think Oplock was screaming at everyone. Yeager tries to shrub Marcus off once again, and during this conversation, we learn that something tragic happened in the brothers' past to cause the rift between them. Yeager still refuses to race, and Marcus leaves the garage heartbroken. Team Fireball praises Marcus Speedster for his racing skill, which gets under Yeager's skin. Of all the pilots in the galaxy, Yeager is the only one who can beat his younger brother, having taught him everything he knows. But Team Fireball isn't buying it, and Yeager heads out to challenge his brother, assuming he'll back down, afraid of losing to his older brother. In Aunt Z's tavern, Marcus is flocked by fans who buy him drinks and swoon over his racing prowess, until the Guavian Death Gang shows up. We're first introduced to the bad boys in black and red in The Force Awakens, when Han Solo and Chewbacca recapture the Millennium Falcon from Ray and Finn. Marcus is up to his neck in debt, and the gang takes his friend and mechanic, Oplock. As ransom for the 20,000 credits, Marcus assumes he'll be winning in the Platform Classic. That's when Yeager shows up to issue his challenge. With his back against the wall, and to Yeager's surprise, Marcus accepts the challenge, completely going against their pact never to race each other again. But Speedster is desperate, and Aunt Z is already taking bets so Yeager lends Kaz to Marcus in Oplock's stead, and the two prepare for the big race. Kaz gets Marcus to open up about the past, and we learn through his arrogance and the use of hyperfuel, Marcus caused an accident that tragically caused the entire race to spin out of control. Still chasing the fortune and the fame, Marcus Speedster admittedly fell on hard times. After losing a few races, he was forced to make ends meet with loans from the Guavian Death Gang, but it was the chance to reunite with his brother that brought him to Colossus Station, not the prize money, and Kaz makes certain to let Yeager know, though Yeager's heart remains cold. The race begins, and we finally get to see Yeager in action. His racer looks great, but I think I have to give the edge to Marcus in his slick-ass black and purple Y-wing-looking variant. The brothers are determined they're neck and neck when the black ace comes from behind, disabling the yellow ace and inching his way toward the front of the pack with Yeager and Marcus. 
The brothers bicker back and forth about the past. It was Marcus and his selfishness that destroyed Yeager's family. But now he wants the chance to atone for his mistakes, and he desperately needs to win the race to save Oplock's life. Yeager concedes defeat to his brother, and Marcus settles his debt with the Guavian Death Gang, freeing Oplock and saving his life. The brothers reunite, and BB-8 lets Kaz know exactly how he feels. The platform classic was layered with emotion and excitement. It was great to get more than a glimpse into Yeager's past, and sad just the same. There is a depth to his character that I'm eager to dive into. Seeing the aces in action is always a plus, and this time we get a look at the yellow and black ace, which for whatever reason have been shown sparingly so far this season. I hope this isn't the last we see of Marcus, and it will be great to know if he somehow ties into the new sequel trilogy, or maybe even the Resistance. So join me next time for another fun-filled recap. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and join the Dreamwalkers on our journey. Hit that bell for notifications and be sure to check out the Rancor Report, where we cover Star Wars news, reviews, theories, and clues. We do what we love, and we hope you love what we do. This has been another Rancorous Review. Until next time. This part is over.